Hey guys, it's Jim. Hope you're having a good day. I am uh, sitting here with Illuminar and I wanted to talk about white balance, how you can manage that and give you some tips and tricks about, you know, managing that and ensuring that you're getting the results that you want uh, with your photos. The reason I'm talking about that today is because uh, today is the day that Luminar, or I should say MacFun, came out with an update to Luminar that included some updates to the color temperature filter. And that's where you go and manage white balance in Luminar. So here it is, color temperature. Now, I have a raw file here. I'm going to hit I on my keyboard. And when you do that, that shows you the photo info, right? So ARW is a raw file on a Sony camera, and that's what I shoot. So I'm going to hit I again to hide that. But I wanted to point that out because with a raw photo, a raw file, if you click on this drop-down menu and color temperature, you have all these different options. So you can click through to see sort of what they'll do to your photo and give yourself some ideas maybe to experiment with, or maybe you'll find something that you like. I'm just going to reset it, but the reason I point that out is with a JPEG or a TIFF, you don't have those options. Uh, and that's why I always shoot raw. Uh, well, that's not why, but the reason why is because you have a lot more latitude in editing and processing your photos. Uh, raw files just contain a whole lot more data, and therefore it's better, I think, right? More is better. So um, that's one option for uh, managing white balance, and uh, that's one. The second one are the sliders themselves. It's showing up as shot. And you can just move these if you want to go cooler and a little bit more pink. You can just sort of move those around and get them looking sort of how you want it. I'm going to reset that. And, of course, the third one is the dropper. And that's what I really wanted to talk about with this update to Luminar. If you click on the dropper, now this dropper was already in Luminar Pluto when it first came out. But the new edition or, or the updates that came out today, when you click on dropper and now when you hover over a photo, you see this little box that says pick a target neutral. I can't point at it with my mouse because my mouse is the dropper. Um, so, you know, that thing, but I think it's pretty obvious. You can see it. It says pick a target neutral, and that's really what the dropper is for. Whatever your, your dropper is touching, you're going to see those colors represented in those box, right? So now you can see I'm hovering over uh, the cathedral, so they're a little bit more brown. I'll hover down here. They're a little bit more kind of brownish green, a little more greenish brown, a little green there, kind of, you know, purple or whatever. The point is, when people use this type of tool, and this has been around in Lightroom for a while, um, when people use this tool to manage their white balance, they're looking for the most neutral color possible. And so that's why it says pick a target neutral. Now, how do you know it's a neutral color? Well, do you see the, the R, the G, and the B, and the numbers next to them at the bottom? That stands for red, green, and blue, which is basically the color spectrum that your, your computer's recognizing. Whoops, I, I hit that. Uh, didn't mean to. Let me uh, let me reset that. Let me come back over here. And oops, let me grab the dropper. Um, when those numbers are pretty much equal, that's when you know that you've pretty much got a neutral color, right? So uh, let me see if I can find a good example. Usually people use like a uh, sort of neutral gray. And uh, here's a good one. That's uh, that's yeah, it's kind of hard to do. Uh, let me maybe try something over here. Try something like that. Those aren't that close let me try okay so these are all getting pretty close but that's pretty white anyway i'm gonna hit it. it it adjusted the temperature so that wasn't exactly a neutral because everything went kind of blue so that's something also to be aware of if you click on that let me reset it again if you click on the the tool right and you come over here if you pick this which is kind of blue if you look at the b in the bottom of that chart there it's 81 so the blues are higher so if if you're telling the uh the computer or the uh, if you're telling Lunar that that's neutral but it's really heavy on the blues when you click on it things are going to go the opposite way right which is more towards the yellow so it's going to warm things up because it says that's neutral okay so let me do something different if I come over here where we have a pretty yellow and I click on that it's going to go more blue it's going to go the other way right because it's uh, it thinks the yellow is neutral so it's going to compensate by going the other way so that's just something to be aware of. And the truth is you could experiment all you want with this stuff and come up with, you know, uh, all sorts of little points here to, to try to find the right one. Maybe you kick, click on that. I kind of like that look, to be honest. I just kind of clicked on the brown on the bridge. But the point is experiment. And if you, you know, if you want to set a neutral white balance point to start with when you're editing a photo. Personally, I don't. Um, I use color temperature on just about every photo. It's in a ton of my presets. But I always use the sliders. 
I think the eyedropper is cool, and this addition of this little um, chart will really be great for helping you pick that neutral sort of color if that's what you're looking for. But I'm always adjusting color temperature because I, I tend to like things to be a little bluer and a little bit more on the sort of magenta in terms of, uh, especially if I'm shooting on the edges of the day. This was at sunrise in Paris, and so uh, that's sort of how I do it. But I wanted to clarify that. So there's basically three ways to adjust the white balance. The drop-down menu, that is if you have a raw file, the sliders, and the, uh, the dropper. And the new addition on the dropper with the little chart to help you pick a target neutral is pretty cool stuff. I'm going to go back over here. I think it was here. That's a little too blue. But I could also, you can make adjustments there and then slide them back and further adjust them with the sliders. So you can use the dropper as a bit of a starting point if you want to. The bottom line is you have a lot of options. Now, here's something that you may not have thought of. You can actually stack these filters on the same layer and make different adjustments. So let's say I like the blue in the sky. Let's say I like that, but it's too blue down here. So maybe I can just come in here and I can take the... Um, the brush and get the uh, get the opacity to 100 and this is going to be really sloppy I'm just going to go ahead and admit that right now and then I'm going to grab the filter so you're probably aware of filter masking and then you can just come and again I said this is going to be sloppy so it's going to be sloppy but I'm just going to go paint this blue into the sky I'm just going to paint over the tree so this is a bad photo to use as an example because the um, with the trees and stuff it would just be a very very complicated sort of painting job if you could ever even get it done. So I'm not concerned with it being accurate here. I just wanted to show you something. And so there we go. I've adjusted the color temperature for the sky and then painted it on. But you know, I look at it and I think there's too much yellow here. So I could add the same filter again. I could come in here and say, I want to go a little bluer. You know, I want to take those tones down a little bit. I just don't want them to be as, uh, as blue as in the previous. And now I've adjusted these, so then I could come in and do the same thing, but on this filter, right? So maybe I come in here and just say, all right, I'm going to paint Notre Dame. And again, sloppy job. I apologize. I'm just doing this quick, but let me show you this. You know, so I'm basically stacking the same filter twice in order to fully customize the color balance or the color temperature or the white balance, whatever you want to call it. Um... But that's a pretty neat little trick. Again, really sloppy around here. I apologize. I'm just kind of jacking around just to show you. But let me show you where we started on the photo, right? And where we are now. And that's two different white balance adjustments done with filter mask. And now this isn't a complete photo, but I would probably come in here with the tone and I'd probably bump up the contrast, take down the smart tone, take down highlights, shadows a little bit, whites, maybe smart tone a little more. And again, it's really showing the sloppy job here, so just disregard that. But just adding that one filter tone and a little bit of color balance, or excuse me, I keep saying color balance. That's actually a different filter. Hopefully you saw my video about that because um, I love that one. I say it a lot, so I'm always using it. Color temperature. I've used color temperature twice to adjust the white balance separately for the sky and the uh, sort of the foreground and the architecture. And then on top of that, I added tone across the entire image just to give it some more contrast. Um, if I was really editing this photo, I would do quite a bit more to it, but you can see that you can very quickly make adjustments and easily, uh, and having the eyedropper as a new addition to the color temperature, I think is really cool. And then just give it some thought or consideration to double stacking the color temp. If you want to adjust the white balance, but you don't like it going globally across the entire photo, just stack it a couple times, same layer, just use a brush and filter mask it in. And then you're all set. And you can quickly go from a fairly flat, overexposed photo to one that looks a whole lot more, uh, you know, a whole lot more uh, natural. It looks better, except for my sloppy painting job there. Um, and the white balance has, you know, I've gotten a lot more control over the photo just using that, uh, that filter alone. So that's how it works, my friends. I hope that helps. Enjoy the new update to Luminar. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you next time. Adios.